Um, uh, so, Maxime uh, Rokmaniko is also representing Center for Spatial Technologies, um, a group of architects, researchers, and educators who develop solutions for spatial problems, hacking economic, technological, and political infrastructures to shape the future city. Very nice. Thank you. This is, has been really nice. I, I would totally come here just as a guest to see all of the projects. It, uh, it's been an enormous pleasure also to meet uh, a lot of you. Um, all right, it's working. So um, I'm, I'm here also presenting the young practice. We exist for two years. It's called the Center for Special Technologies. We are a group of kind of architects and designers, as Tamar uh, presented us. But I guess um, what distinguishes us uh, is that we have this hacker culture. We just like play with things. We try to not take one client, one project commissions. We try to work on things that are systematic. So uh, we're based in uh, Kiev, uh, and um, yeah, which also brings uh, a lot of interesting uh, kind of specificity to what we do. We were told to show just one project, so I won't go too far in terms of what kinds of different things we do, but the, what we're going to show here somehow uh, echoes the project that we've done with the London-based practice Dark Matter Labs, that basically was looking at new tools for architects and new tools for design, and we were basically exploring whatever BIMs, um, in, Internet of Things, all of the kind of uh, fancy computer-looking things that exist out there. And like, I mean, again, like I did this screenshots yesterday, and if you just Google like building information modeling or like digital twin, you get this kind of blue, dark blue slides with like white lines, and it's, it's awesome. It's made for dudes. Uh, it kind of looks, um, looks like something that you want to probably play with, do you? This is the person who's uh, really, really important for me. Most of things that I do is because of uh, her books. Um, she has this amazing article which is called uh, Internet of Things. And uh, basically, in that article, she references Latour, who says, speaking about this kind of uh, alternative CAD, which is um, kind of unlike the CAD we have, which basically describes objects in the world. It would somehow actually show what those objects do and kind of try to reference these um, kind of web of uh, cultural, political, and economic forces that those objects are somehow connected to. So um, this combined together with this kind of idea of deep addressability, which uh, we borrow from Benjamin Bratton, um, is somehow also uh, the foundation for what I'm going to show. So. Here you basically see the sort of um, IPv6 address, which is, uh, I mean, just a way to uh, to reference something on the internet, uh, being printed on a like a micro micro scale. But the point is that it would be interesting if we develop this kind of um, deep addressability, in which we wouldn't only be able to reference each specific object, like me or the mic, but also would be able to reference all the relationships between objects, for example, me speaking uh, to this mic. So um, this kind of idea of like Internet of Things being something that models the relationships in the space is something we also save, and uh, we talk about this a bit later. Uh, I mean, the, just an example, this is a project called by Terra Zero, which uh, basically is uh, about assigning a cryptocurrency wallet to plants, and um, they made this installation where there's a camera that looks at plants. Plants grow with certain speed, and uh, people can buy and sell plants, which basically is combining this kind of Ethereum hash and the object and the camera that can see how quickly the object grows. And therefore, we have different relationship between things. We can, in this case, let people speculate and buy and sell plants. In any case, uh, networked homes is the proposal that we brought here. It's basically this kind of uh, attempt to marry our interest into like critical exploration of um, actor network theory and these tools that we constantly study. And also, like uh, Mikola, who's here with me, he's uh, basically a BIM uh, manager. So, so we have like a expertise in the office, which has to do with like actually providing services of. Uh, 
like setting up software for larger architecture offices or big um, development companies to kind of develop tools for them. And again, like uh, this is the nature of uh, of this proposal, which also we plan to continue working on for quite a long time in terms of um, the fact that our interest is basically to develop tools. It's to develop things that don't exist yet, they should exist. What we're more or less asking is if, if buildings are these kinds of socio-material networks that come together in certain moment in time and space, uh, why don't we use those tools to actually try to model them as profoundly as we can and to kind of try to trace relationships between things that are actually mattering and mattering here is kind of a fan, funny word. Uh, but in any case, um, yeah, I'm going to show you uh, what we actually do. So DOMA, yes, we presented DOMA yesterday. Uh, for this project, we have an apartment that we are playing with as a sort of test case. And as soon as we got that test case, and we have different dwellers within this apartment, we got a question. What is a fair way for the people who use this apartment to uh, pay for it, right? So if there's two dwellers, they have different, um, kind of they use different amounts of square meters, they use electricity in different ways. What are fa fair ways to uh, split the bill? So this is a very practical question, but then out of this question, we also kind of started to look at things like, um, again, smart contracts and ways to figure this out. But in any case, I'm gonna show you the apartment. It's pretty nice, we did. Um, 3D scans of it uh, three times. First time when we just purchased it. So it was a nice Stalinist building with uh, floors that are made of wood, which were very nice. And uh, yeah, we made a mess. Um, we kind of uh, decided that we need to reshape it a bit. We saved a lot of things though. Uh, so the floor is still there. Uh, if you see our little, uh, presentation on the table, it kind of does this thing. It looks at these three moments in time, and it basically tries to like show you the collage of these different moments. And again, I'm going to go back to this. So um, again, uh, we have this kind of meta project, which has to do with the finding these different relationships. But we also know that there's this massive problem of carbon. All of the materials that we had to buy for renovating an apartment are, uh, have, have embodied carbon, which is the carbon that is needed to produce them. We decided to focus on this aspect here. And uh, we also know that this is like a project that uh, needs to exist out there. And we kind of have intuitive feeling that we, um, we know how to get funding to build it further. So uh, right here you see the sort of um, a prototype of a computational system that references different objects in the apartment. And you have cards which are basically the sort of proto-computational systems which um, you can also play with and kind of see how, how they relate to different uh, things on the floor plan. Yeah. So basically what we did first is we collect all the checks. Uh, the sort of um, every, every single thing we paid for, we scanned and we also digitized, which um, I have to say wasn't too much fun. Uh, it's a huge Excel sheet. Um, we also assigned the uh, unit classes to each object. And then because we have amazing Kolya, we've built this um, uh, structure. It's all the, um, uh, all the data about each object. So it's basically, it references Revit model and it has like an ID for each thing and it has an address. Who remembers I was talking about addresses and addressability? Here are addresses, it's right here. Um, and we can actually make these things talk to each other, which is really interesting and exciting and we look forward to explore what is possible out of this. So we use BHOM, which is, this, is an open source way to reference things. Then we connect them via Speku, which is this kind of another piece of tech, which is open source that brings things from one software package to another so we're not stuck inside of like a Autodesk stack. So we have like a Revit model which basically is being kind of digested into pure data and being reassembled in Rhino. Um, and, and this is uh, the beginning of conversation about things we want to explore, the stories that matter. So, uh, for example, uh, materials and supply chains. We, exactly as I said, we know that those things are really important. And uh, 
like even uh, like putting GPS trackers on like waste and seeing where it goes. So j just a um, quick, uh, little uh, mark here. The renovation process, we don't see it as a fancy design project. We kind of assume that it's a normal thing that everyone does in Kiev where this project was done. Therefore, the kind of forensic analysis of things that happened to this apartment, we can kind of extrapolate to the larger image and understand, okay, if we do the waste management this way, it's probably how other people do it. Like we didn't do anything specifically environmentally minded, we just kind of looked at the, the normal way that construction people did this and tried to analyze this and then think about what is possible to do. So this is uh, Provenance, which is a um, company that does these things for food. It basically lets you trace where each, each um, food product comes from and what kinds of um, qualities it has and what kind of labor is used for its production. So we think about this, that this would be nice to have in a construction industry. Uh, this is the, the thing that we're using currently to m uh, model the embodied carbon. It literally came out this um, December, I think, and we found this. We thought, okay, let's just like uh, calculate, calculate embodied carbon. So again, here you have this kind of uh, cards, which are basically a prompt for you guys to play with this thing and see, okay, there's a bedroom floor. There is this kind of little JSON file, which is the a piece of code. It's basically a table that is hierarchical. It just says that uh, this piece of floor or this wall uh, was done by this guy, was done with these materials, and these materials were bought here and blah, blah, blah. So, so this is basically like a way for you to explore the system and to start to feel that each thing is not only a thing, it comes from somewhere, it's made by someone, it's this kind of networked thing that is uh, just here in this particular moment in time and space, and it's also a, con a conversation about durability and um, temporary things. So again, like the provocation that we have here is to think about materials and their lifespan. So this bedroom, it was basically all put with a lot of uh, concrete-based materials. We haven't finished calculations, but I have a feeling that it's uh, half of the carbon footprint of the whole uh, renovation project. So um, the sort of one idea that we are exploring and looking at how to build this is to say, should we put an insurance on the carbon-heavy uh, things that are within our homes or whatever in, in our buildings? Which would make com complete sense, because if we uh, spend so much carbon to build an element, then it, we probably uh, want it to serve as long as we want. And if it doesn't, we probably uh, need some sort of way of penalizing that. So we kind of are thinking about this kind of contractual relationships with objects, and also thinking about, is there maybe another ownership model that we could have for things like windows or other kind of complex products that um, would be really nice if they were, were used more than once. All right, uh, so then really quickly, uh, we already have a lot of things that we connected within this apartment to the internet and uh, you know the little um, vacuum cleaner guy that we have is, is seeing the, the place in a certain way. We also built this kind of uh, sensor system which helps us because it's basically also our office. Um, it helps us to understand conditions in which we work. It was actually shocking. Like I figured out that, uh, uh, like I sleep in a space that is way too hot and way not humid enough. So yeah, it's pretty. I recommend this to everyone. Yeah. So, so then thinking again uh, about how the space is used, how much it's used. So this is an apartment and uh, uh, office. So it's used like 24 hours a day and we can model the use, we can, um, again, through these things that, uh, do you remember I was talking about how relationships can be addressed? So for example, we have a Wi-Fi router and I have my phone. So whenever I come home, it automatically gets connected. So that's an example of where we can have a, like a log of that kind of relationship, which is assigned an address, and we can just uh, see it as a sort of useful information to work with. But also, importantly, uh, we want to play with things. So um, there's this whole layer of aesthetics that we kind of are extremely interested here. There's this map which uh, is done by Kate Crawford, which is uh, the um, uh, anatomy of 
uh, Alexa, which talks about all of the things about it, including where it comes from, what it's made of, what kind of labor it was done with, what kinds of patterns it was uh, relying on. Oh wait, doesn't, there's no sound. Anyways, this is just a dude who's doing ASMR home thing, and it's basically like folding socks, but I thought it's very cute. Um, um, it's a pity because the sound is really nice. It's like, you know. Um, but again, like this kind of coziness and cuteness comes together with uh, things like this, which are uh, image recognition technologies that kind of model objects in your home and try to sell more IKEA to you. Um, yeah, um, I mean, again, like we we kind of looking at the everything game, which is this kind of ob uh, object-oriented ontology thing where you can kind of be everything. You can be a bug, piece of grass. You can be a mountain, an island, or the planet. Any, in any case, I'm, I'm almost done, don't kick me out. This whole thing is about finding relationships between things and also trying to figure out if there are ways to represent them in an interesting way. Um, so just to wrap up, uh, spatial technologies, this is us, uh, with, with this kind of a very uh, nice opportunity to come here and present this, we already built this little prototype on top of which we're planning to develop already three things which are uh, this embodied carbon contract the apartment as a sort of an instrument to explore different aesthetic regimes and different images and sounds and also we're planning to solve the doma a problem that we uh, encountered in the beginning which is has to do with this idea of if the space costs money and we have to share it what are the things out there that can help us figure that out um, so just to, to finish, um, this kind of mattering story is not just about putting an address on each object within this home. It, that leads you to a question of so what? It's about building these narratives, the stories, the material trajectories to follow, and unusual interactions. And that's what we hope to find uh, when we continue with this project. Thank you.